testing. There we go. So once the business is up and running to where it needs to be, they systematize, they automate, and then they expand and they explode. And so those are the type of personality types. Now, no matter, no matter what your personality type is, you can make a ton of money. But knowing your personality type can mean you can kind of curtail your business, build your business around your personality. Blues should be much more social people. I would recommend blues are going to be the kind of people that can connect with buyers a lot more, whereas greens are going to put systems in place where they're going to make their marketing come in and they're going to get lots of deals coming in. Remember, everything in this business is about figuring out how you're going to position yourself in the middle, how you're going to fit into the business. So how many reds do we have in the room? Raise your hands. Very cool. Look around. Look around. If you need to borrow money, go see those guys. Okay. How many greens do we have in the room? If you need to borrow money and you have a secure plan, go see those guys. All right. And if we, I won't make the blues raise their hands because of what I was just saying about blues. So the yellows, go ahead and raise your hand. These are the individuals in the room with probably the biggest hearts and that care the most about other people in the room. They're the, most, the people probably most likely to get emotional and teary-eyed in a movie. Uh, my wife is definitely have a, as a yellow type of personality type, and, and, and she's kind of a yellow-red, so we're similar in that even though I'm red-yellow, so it, it's very balanced in that sense. So for each and every one of you, just thinking about when you're on conversations and you're doing business with people, starting to categorize them and putting them into their place, because we all want to know how to do business with people. Well, people do business with people they like, right? People they like, right? Uh, they they want to keep doing business with people they trust. They do business with people they like. Remember, all buying decisions, right, are based on emotion first. So if you like somebody and you have a good feeling about them, that's the first place to start. Then what you do is you back it up with logic and you make logical decisions. Remember what Phil was sharing about when he invests with individuals, how does he invest, right? He says, well, do they have a track record of success? Then the second thing he says, well, is there a long-term profit benefit from doing this business? And he has a step-by-step -step process for that, and so he's able to make those kind of decisions. That's how a green thinks. Me, as a, as a red and a yellow, for me, who they are is, is the single most important thing to me, and if I can make a lot of money with them is very important with me. I'm not interested in making a little bit of money. That's just me. Is anybody else in that boat They want to make a lot of money, oh, yeah. right? Versus a little bit. So this whole group, we have like four individuals right here who didn't raise their hands. So we're going to, you guys don't want to make a lot of money? I, nah, I'm just teasing you guys. And so as we get into these process and our minds start racing and we start going faster and faster and we're thinking about this business and today all of you are drinking from a fire hose and, and it keeps coming at you and there's more and there's more and there's more. Well, you're not going to learn everything this weekend. That's impossible. But what we can do is take you to the next level this weekend so you can continue this journey, continue this process, and you can start getting your first deals and your first transactions so you can start putting money into your pocket from this business. Now, what happens a lot of times is people always have these if-thens, right? If I know everything, then I can go do a deal. Well, for me, that's really easy being a right-brainer and a red. I just go and I go, and I make decisions and I move forward. And so I'll probably make more mistakes than most greens will, and at the same time, I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to push it forward and I'm going to keep going and going and going. So start thinking about how you fit into this and how you can transition yourself into action. Because the number one rule is you leave here and you take what? Action. Good, all together. You leave here and you take? Action. Action, right? You have to take massive action. A little bit of action is, isn't going to get you anywhere. Phil talks all the time. He's at such a high level for each of you to pay attention to what he's saying. talks about getting uncomfortable. That's first step right? If you just want to get into this business and be comfortable, then you're going to fail. You must be willing to get into this business, make your sacrifice, get uncomfortable. It doesn't mean you're going to be uncomfortable forever, but in the beginning, getting uncomfortable is super, super important. Because once you do that, then you step into the next place, which I like to call the wasteland. And that's a tough place to be in. It's one of the toughest places to be in as an investor. And, and a lot of you have made that decision. A lot of you are in that place right now. And that's where you're kind of struggling a little bit. You don't know who to trust, who not to trust, who to do business with, who not to do business with. You know, you hear this information, that information. You're trying to figure out who's real. Anybody have that conversation going on in their head? Raise your hands. Right? Join the club. You're not alone. And as you get into these conversations, what you have to do is you have to start anchoring into what I call the, the dream builders, 
the givers, the people you want to continue to do business with, and you have to follow those people and do business with people. But you have to decide the difference between the, the people that are and the people that aren't. And if you don't do that, you're going to end up wasting a lot of time. And the single greatest thing that kills any new real estate investor is when they waste time. Oh, I'm going to go do this business in six months. I'm going to go do it in 12 months. I'm going to go do it in two years. I'm going to do it when the new year starts, right? Anybody who wants to put it off, you're, every day you put it off is two days. Every two days is a week. Every week is a month. You put it off for a month, you just lost a year. And if you put it off for a full year, you might as well quit. And, and that's the mindset you have to have. And at this point, if you've put it off three months, six months, know that the, the clock starts to count against you. How many of you have closed the deal in this room before? Raise your hands. Closed the real estate transaction. Those people that have closed the real estate traction have 100% full belief, about a third of the people in the room. For the other two-thirds of you, you don't completely 100% have belief until you do your first deal. And the longer you put it off, the further away that dream gets. So we have to do it now. We have to do it in this moment, in this present tense moment, because it's when you do it now that everything starts to fall into place. And in your mind, if you're putting it off, everything in the world puts it off for you. In your mind, when you decide you're going to do it, everything starts to build so that the business is happening right now. And everything will start to change when you make that little bit of mind shift. So what I want everybody to do is take a big deep breath and put yourself into the moment of doing it right now. Go ahead and breathe it out. Good. Phil's going to go through some amazing things for you guys during the next hour and a half. It's going to be a super powerful last run of the day for us today. Get yourself focused, right? Get yourself back in this moment. I know some of you might be getting a little bit, little bit tired because it's so much going in. Just get yourself in this moment. Just learn what's going on right now. Focus on what's going on right now because when you do that, you're going to get everything you need to get during this next section. How many of you realize that right now, if you paid a million dollars to be in this room, you'd be super laser focused and locked in? Raise your hands. Okay? I want you to get into that place. You paid a million dollars to be in this room during the next hour and a half. That's where you're at. Get yourself into that place, and then we're going to take it up a level for you guys. I'm super excited about what Phil's about to share with you, and, and what he's going to continue to share with you tomorrow is, is just completely awesome as well. So I want you guys to go ahead and stand on your feet, bring up Phil, give him a ton of energy, because he needs to take it home. Come on over, brother. Oh. All right. So y'all that were here uh, yesterday during the, um, uh, during the session yesterday, the bonus day, um, what was your favorite presentation of the day? All of it? All of it? Yeah. All of it. Lots of it. OK. Uh, right now I have a little different presentation. What I want to do is I want to tie a bunch of the pieces together for what we've been doing over the last couple of days. Oh, by the way, here's my my philism on, on fear. You know, too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. That's a pretty good quote. A courageous person is someone that is scared but does not quit. So one of the biggest reasons why people don't jump in all the way on this real estate thing is fear. Fear is a big paralyzing thing. Um, what is keeping you from jumping in? Who's ready to jump all in in this business? Let me see a show of hands. Okay. Is anybody not ready to jump all in, and, and what's holding you back? Ignorance. Ignorance? <laughs> well, we call that specialized knowledge. It's a little, little nicer way of saying that, right? Yeah. Money. 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 So uh, sorry, that's not an excuse, right? We don't, it, time is not an excuse, and money is not an excuse. How many different ways did I tell you yesterday you could do this with no money? Nine. nine. I went through nine different ways to make a million dollars with no money at all, OK? So it doesn't take money. It takes specialized knowledge. The more you know, the less money you use. I use less and less and less and less of my own money as I've built my business, because I know how to do it without money. And whether you have money or not, it's smarter to do it without money. Okay? And the reason it's smarter to do it without money is really two reasons. One, I found it's really hard to lose money if you don't actually spend any money. <laughs> you know? uh, but number two, which is really even more important, you can't scale your business with your own money. You're not, nobody has enough money. Donald Trump doesn't have enough money to make money on his money. I mean, let's say you have $100,000. Great, you buy a house. You know, and then you sell it, and you make $15,000 profit. And then you do it again, and maybe in the year, your $100,000 makes you thirty. dollars Great, $30,000 is not enough money to get excited about, right? You, 
have to have the ability to do more deals than you have money to fund. Okay, so you've got to learn the no money strategies. And that's what we talked about yesterday. We're going to talk more about that uh, tomorrow. So I do make, need to make everybody understand, you can do this. Anybody can do this. Time is not an excuse and money is not an excuse. Yes, there's some specialized knowledge, right, that you have to acquire in order to do this. That is absolutely true. I've been sharing with you and I brought in my A-team to share a lot of specialized knowledge with you this weekend. I get it, there's a lot of specialized knowledge. You have to sometimes hear it a few times before it really all sinks in. But it's not rocket science, right? Um, it's not something that's complicated, it's just something you may have to hear two or three times. Some of you have been to this event before. Who's been to one of my events before? Can I see a show of hands? Okay. Why do you keep coming back, you guys? I liked it. It's always a good value, and there's a lot I need to hear again. Right. And, and the second time and third time you hear it, more to say over here. yeah, more of it sticks, and it becomes how you start to think. And as you start to think differently, you start to act differently, and then you start to get the different results. So if you're here for the first time, you know, and you're thinking, wow, there's a lot going on here, it's okay. You know, that's how you're supposed to feel. In fact, you're supposed to feel uncomfortable. To become successful, you must first be what? Uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah, go ahead. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'm going to give a presentation now. And it's a presentation I really enjoy giving uh, because it ties a lot of the pieces together for a lot of the things that we've been talking about this weekend. I call it my big dog presentation. And the reason I call it that is it's how to become a big dog real estate investor. This is intended to tie a lot of the pieces together. This is intended to talk about what it takes to take this business all the way in. What does it look like when you go all in? What does it look like to be a successful full-time real estate investor? But maybe more important than that, you know, how do you get there? Because besides specialized knowledge, everybody needs what? You need a plan. Right? So this is a plan. I'm going to give you a plan in this presentation, a very step-by-step -step plan. I pride myself in kind of breaking things down into bite-sized pieces, and I'm going to break it down into bite-sized pieces. I really think you're going to enjoy this a lot. Your arm, <laughs> it's all right, no problem, is in my presentation. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> how to be the big dog real estate investment, step-by-step -step live. Um, all of you have heard this. I'm going to go through this again. The subject matters for educational purposes only. We are not lawyers, CPAs, financial planners, et cetera. Although we had some lawyers and CPAs talk here earlier, didn't we? Uh, et cetera. You should have your contracts, taxes, business plans, et cetera, reviewed by Charlie or uh, Nathan right before completing any final uh, real estate transactions. Um, government regulations also require that I disclose that the results that I discuss are not typical results. I am an action taker. Remember, that's the first thing I said this morning. You know. You want success, you want what you want, you've got to be an action taker. I have achieved remarkable results. The students I talk about have achieved remarkable results. All of my most successful students, what they have in common is taking action, right? I believe most people don't take any action and don't get any results. Only you can make the decision. You've got to make a decision today. You've got to make a decision tomorrow. You've got to make a decision on Monday morning, right? Are you going to be an action taker? You know, or are you going to be typical? Are you going to settle for the life you have now, or do you want something different? When I asked before, how many people are looking for different results? We'll do it again. How many people are looking for different results than you're getting now? Well, guess what? You know, we've got some problems right out of the chute, right? Because to get different results is going to require different actions, and nobody wants to take different actions because we all want to be comfortable. And the definition of being comfortable is doing what? Doing what we're doing now, right? So to become more successful, you must first become uncomfortable. Okay, well, let's get into the presentation. Um, first thing I want to say is, it's back, right? The American dream is back, but maybe more importantly, or equally importantly, real estate investing is back. It's been a long, dry spell. You know, we just went through a big bubble. Uh, it's been a five-year dry spell. And we've got an opportunity now. We're in a new market cycle. I'll show you an example of a market cycle in a minute. But we've got a new market cycle that we haven't had since the early 2000s. It's kind of 2001 all over again. The people that jumped into the real estate market in 2001 made a fortune between 2001 and 2007. And now we've got another market cycle that we're going through. 
People ask me, what strategies work right now? My best answer is yes. Okay? I mean, everything works in this cycle of the market. Like a couple of years ago, for example, land. People who own land would say, what do I do with land? I say, there's nothing you could do with land. Three years ago, you couldn't sell it, you couldn't build on it, you couldn't finance it, banks weren't loaning money to finance it, banks weren't mon loaning the money. The only thing you could do with land three years ago was pay the tax on it, right? That was it. I have a uh, subdivision next to me, kind of a higher end subdivision where I live in Austin, and from 2008 to 2012, they sold one lot in this subdivision. And that's not surprising. The lots cost 350,000, so pretty expensive lots. Guess how much they sold in 2013? 35. Yeah. I mean, that's how different. When the market changes, it changes in a big way. 35, $350,000 pieces of land. You know, yes, you can sell land. Yes, you can build big houses. You can do new construction. Yes, you can do renovations. Yes, you can do seller financing. Yes, you can do short sales. Everything works in this market cycle. And that's why it's such a good time to be a real estate investor. It's a forgiving cycle, right? Four years ago, three years ago, even two years ago, when I bought a house, I'd put it on the market. It would take forever to get an offer. I'd finally get one offer, and it'd be a lowball offer. Right? And I'd have to take it because it was the only offer I got. And then they'd hem and haw and they'd say, I want new appliances and a new roof. And I only got one offer. And I've been trying to sell this for a long time, so what do I do? I buy them new appliances and I give them a new roof. Right? You know, and all that's eating into my profit. And finally, I get the deal done. It takes forever and I make a small amount of money. Today, when I fix up a property, I put it on the market and I get five offers. Right? And I take the highest offer. And they ask for a new roof, and what do I tell them? People in hell want iced tea. I understand you want a new roof. <laughs> They're not getting the tea, and you're not getting the roof, right? I mean, because what? Because I've got four other buyers, right? So now I put it on the market. Not only does it sell quickly, uh, but it sells for a higher price, and I don't have to give any concessions, OK? That's just the market we're in. The market's more forgiving in 2000, 2002, 2004. When people, if you ever watch that stupid TV show, Flip That House, right? I mean, it always showed idiots making money flipping houses. Mostly, frankly, not because they were so brilliant, but because they were kind of in the right place at the right time. They were investing in the right place at the right time. If they took forever to figure out how to rearrange the flowers in the flower garden, by the time they just put the house back on the market, it was worth more. And that's how they made their money. So you're in the right place. I don't need to convince you all. You know, you need to invest in real estate. That's why you're here. But I just want to give you a little pat on the back because five years from now, you know, we're going to all get back together, either at the local real estate club or at an event like this, and there's going to be 500 people in the room. And all of you are going to be sitting up front, okay, talking about all the deals and all the money that you made. You know, and all of those people five years from now are saying, ooh, I've seen all these other people make money. Now I want in, right? Because by 2007, everybody wanted to get in. Now, arguably, that was the worst time to get in, right? You're getting in at the right place, and you're getting in at the right time. This is what a market cycle looks like, by the way. Um, one of my mentors actually drew this chart for me, and he said, Phil, when I learned about real estate, my mentor taught me this, and uh, now I'm going to teach you this, and this is everything you need to be uh, an expert at real estate. And now I'm going to teach you all what I was taught by my mentor. This is everything you need to know about real estate. Okay? This is a real estate cycle. Now, it looks like just a simple squiggly line, but there's actually a lot going on here. Because the shape of every mar uh, real estate cycle is pretty much the same. Always three to five years up, one to three down. Three to five years up, one to three down. Markets go up gradually. They correct rapidly. So that's the first thing that's kind of interesting about the shape of this curve. Now, the next thing that's interesting of the shape of the curve is whenever a market bottoms out, each bottom is a little higher than the last bottom. And over time, of course, we know that real estate prices go up. So that's another interesting part of the cycle. But the really interesting thing, I think, more than anything else about a market cycle is the way we see it as real estate professionals versus civilians. Okay. Civilians, if you ask a civilian, a non-real estate professional, if you ask them what, prop, what their property is worth, what their house is worth, they will always tell you what it was worth six to nine months ago. 
You know, civilians have a perception of value that's six to nine months old. Why? Because their, their opinion is based on, oh, last year I got a tax appraisal for this, or I saw the neighbor sell the house and he had a for sale sign for that, and they're working on old data. Now, as real estate investors and realtors, we're working on today, right? We know what things are worth right now, okay? And what's interesting, when we're real estate professionals and we're dealing with civilians who we're selling and buying houses to, is this six month or nine month lag in perception. Because, you know, right here, where we are in the market or wherever we are in the market, you know, the house is worth this, but the seller thinks it's worth this. And if you buy the house and take a long time to fix it up again, by the time you sell it, it's this. Everybody follow that? When you're in the cycle over here, I remember when this cycle started, you know, the houses were worth this but the sellers were still thinking it was worth this. And if you took very long at all to do the project, by the time you sold it, it was worth that. It's really hard to make money over here. You can, and I have, and other investors have. But it's just harder to do. When you're investing in this cycle, you want to get in and you want to get out. Time is not your friend, okay? You want to wholesale. You want to do very, very short-term projects. If you're doing fix and flips, it's paint and carpet. Get in, get out, okay? Over here, what do you want to do? You want to do complicated projects. You want to build houses. You want to take little houses and turn them into big houses. Time is your friend. The longer the project takes, the more money you make. Everything is more forgiving over here. This is where fortunes are made by newbies. This is where fortunes are made by pros, okay? and a lot of you are newbies. So let me move the, the, the laser pointer around here. Let me hear a little noise in the room where you think we are in the market. OK, over here. I would tend to agree with you. Yeah, <coughs> by 75 years of data, three to five years up, we're about nine months into a new cycle. And this is a great time and a great opportunity. OK, so I'm going to give you this presentation. I call it uh, the big dog model, the big dog presentation. I'm actually going to start it with Phil's big dog story. And to be honest with you, the story doesn't have a lot to do with the presentation. But it is a true story. I thought I'd share it with you. And it happened way back when I was in high school. When I was in high school, I got to have a date with the most beautiful girl uh, in the town that I grew up with. Now, she was not as beautiful as Shanoa, but in the town that I grew up with, she was the most beautiful girl in the town that I grew up with. And I had a, a best friend who's still one of my best friends to this day who had arranged this date uh, with this girl. And on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, she was a 12. Shanoa's, of course, a 13, but she was a 12. And um, so I had a date with this girl arranged, and I'm going to get a, a, a date with this girl. Now, the, her, her father was a big shot. Her father owned this big compound on the side of the town. And this was like before the internet and all that sort of thing. So nobody quite knew like, how this guy made his money and exactly what he did and what, what was going on there. It was also a little intimidating. But I borrowed my father's car, and I went to pick her up for our date. And I drive up to the compound, and I get out of the car, and I'm walking towards this giant house. And as I'm walking towards this giant house, this enormous, like the size of a horse practically, German Shepherd starts charging at me, barking and snarling. And it's pretty intimidating. In fact, this dog gets up on its rear legs, it puts its paws on my shoulders, and it looks me dead in the eyes. OK? Now, I'm six foot one. I'm not used to looking eye to eye with a German Shepherd. So this was probably about the most intimidating thing uh, up until that point in my life that had ever happened to me. And I'm wondering whether or not I'm going to make it through that experience. And just about that time, the dad walks up to me and he says, so what time will you be bringing my daughter back <laughs> from your date? OK, well, needless to say, that was the first and last date I ever had with the most beautiful girl that I grew up with. Because I knew there was nothing that I wanted from that relationship that was going to suit well uh, with that father. And uh, that this was probably not something I really wanted to pursue that strongly. But I remember the experience well. 
and her dad was what I call a big shot, right? Or maybe you would call him a big dog. He was a big dog in the town that I grew up with. And I always thought growing up, man, you know, what would it be like to be the big dog, right? What is it like to be that guy? And obviously, like probably a lot of us, we all want to know that, and maybe even we all have aspirations to be that. And we're going to talk about how you become that in this presentation. So who is the big dog, right? Well, the big dog is the guy who gets the most deals, all right? The big dog is the guy who gets the best deals. The big dog rarely does bad deals. And that's not necessarily because the big dog is any smarter than anybody else, but the big dog has the best network, the big dog has the best marketing, the big dog gets to cherry pick, right, the best deals. Usually when somebody does a bad deal, when somebody loses money on a real estate deal, you know why they lose money on a real estate deal? Because they gamble because they were a motivated seller, because they just they, they didn't have enough good deals to choose from, so they took one that was a marginal deal, a risky deal. And the reason they took a risky deal is fundamentally because they didn't have better deals to choose from. So they took the best deal they had, and it was a marginal deal. Sometimes that wins, and sometimes that loses. Big Dog works fewer hours. Life is not fair, OK? Life is just not fair. Some people work a lot harder than others. Right? Some people make a lot more money than others. Okay? People that make more money tend to not work as hard as people who make less money. It doesn't seem fair. Maybe it's not fair, but that's life. If you want to know how much money somebody has, here's some advice. Ask them to lunch. A broke person will say, well, let me look at my calendar. Um, I'm free a week from Thursday. A successful person will say, um, well, what works better, 11 or 1? Why? As successful people do fewer and fewer things. Remember we talked about that with Donald Trump? Donald Trump only does one thing, right? <laughs> successful people have outsourced all but the highest and most valuable activities. Big Dog uses less of his or her own money. As you acquire more and more specialized knowledge, as you start to organize your business in a better way, you're going to use less and less of your own money, and that's good, because your money will not make you money. It will not scale your business. And like I said before, the Big Dog is usually free for lunch. OK, well, that's great. Uh, how do we get that? Well, we're going to cover that in this presentation. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about five steps to becoming the big dog. And I think I've really cracked the code. I'm excited about this. I really love doing this presentation because I think I've really cracked the code. I've taught thousands of people how to invest in real estate. And I've seen the different traps that they fall into. And I've seen how to steer people around the traps. The reason you seek expertise and advice from me is to help you do what? Avoid the mistakes I've made, right? Take the shortcut from point A to point B. I think I've really figured this out. I'm going to share it in this presentation. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Who is this for? Who is this not for? Well, it's not for anybody that doesn't want to work, OK? So if you're here and you want to get rich, but you're not willing to do anything, I can't help you. But if you figure out how to make that work, please call me. OK? Uh, it's not for people just looking for get rich quick. You know, I don't do that. Uh, anybody that's not interested in learning how to make wealth and income through real estate, I teach how to do it through real estate. You know, so that's what we're going to talk about. Anybody who doesn't want to invest in marketing, right? What's the most important skill you have to have? Marketing, marketing yes. So not going to do marketing, can't make money in real estate. And anybody just looking for the next big shiny penny? This is the real deal, folks. This is not about some next big shiny penny. So what is this? I call it the big dog model. Okay? And I'm going to walk through really two presentations today. The first presentation is where you want to be. Right? You want to get somewhere? You want to get something? Well, first you need to define the target. What's the goal? We're going to work together and define the goal. Okay? And then we're going to break down the steps to getting to that goal. And this is where I'm really excited because I really think I've cracked this. OK, what's the objective? The objective is total transformation. There's two ways you can grow your, yourself and your business. You can do things that are going to grow your business transactionally. Transactional improvements to your business are making your business more efficient, right? Putting in procedures and increasing efficiency allows you to do more transactions using the same procedures. So, you can grow your business anywhere from maybe 10% to even 100% just by making transactional improvements to your business. And that's good. Everybody would like to get 100% more money out of their business, right? That's great. But we're also going to talk about transformational improvements to your business. 
some people, and we talked about Trump and, and Richard Branson and my friend Perry, some people make, you know, a hundred times or a thousand times more money in the same number of hours each day. They're not doing that by just working harder, right? They're not even getting a thousand times more money by just working more efficiently. They're making a thousand times more money because they're doing things completely differently, okay? Those things that they're doing completely differently, that's transformational. You know, I shared some transformational concepts with you so far. We'll share some more tomorrow. We're going to share some in this presentation. We're going to talk about outstanding results, right? Doing less and getting paid more, getting paid what you're worth. That's what got me here, right? I was in high tech, and I didn't feel like I was getting paid what I was worth. I wanted to do something where if I'm willing to do the work, there's no cap on how much money I could make. Okay, if I make good decisions and do the right things and I do things and set things up correctly, I can make as much money as I want. I didn't want anybody to say this is how much you get. And I've broken this down into five steps. So it's very simple, right? Little money, few employees, five steps. I'm going to walk through those five steps today. And we're going to have some fun. I've done this before and it's a lot of fun. Now I know this is a lofty set of goals but I'm pretty sure I can get through these, and the reason I'm pretty sure I can get through these is because I've given this presentation before. Okay, so part one, where do you want to be? I'm going to take a sip of my drink here. So quick exercise, <laughs> why are you here, all right? What, uh, what are you doing here? What attracted you to real estate? Uh, are you attracted to this because of the, the fancy stuff, cars, watches, tons of cash, you know, the big house, is that what's driving you? Um, or is it that you want to have more time with your family? Is that what's driving you? Or maybe it's that thing called freedom, that combination of time and money. You want to have the ability to pretty much do what you want to do when you want to do it. Okay? So let's do a quick poll here. Shiny things. Let's see shiny things. Put your hands up for shiny things. Okay. Yeah, nothing wrong with shiny things, right? Family. Who's here for wanting more time with a family? Yeah. Okay. A lot of people with a family. How about the freedom thing? Freedom. Wow, look around, folks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not surprised that you want freedom. I even put it up on the slide because I knew the answer. Because usually when you talk to a group of right-minded entrepreneurs, you know, if you ask this question to different people, you get different answers. But when you ask this question to these people, to people who want to, to really want it, want that different life, people who want that and have that entrepreneurial mindset, people ready to roll up their sleeves, and really go for this, this is the answer that you get. And I wasn't surprised from spending the last couple of days with you that I got this answer here. And some people do achieve freedom. Now I will say, when people become financially free the first time, typically here's what happens, right? Uh, they get some money, they buy some shiny things, and they start to grow their little business into a big business. And somewhere along the line, they realize that you know money does not equal happiness. And they've got this big, business and they realize, wow, I'm just, now I'm just working 80 hours in my business instead of 80 hours in my job. What's the difference here? And they wake up one day and they say, gosh, I'd really like to have that freedom thing again, but it doesn't feel like I quite got there. So what? <laughs> well, I'm just telling you this because I've gone through this. I've had lots of friends go through this. That's kind of the cycle that most people go through. Success by itself is not that exciting. It actually can get a little boring. I had a job one time at Motorola and after a couple of years, I was able to hire all the best people in this department. And the department ran so smoothly because the people were so good in the department. I could go on vacation. And when I came back from vacation, they said, Phil, you're doing such a great job. It was like, I haven't even been here. <laughs> and that was cool, right, um, to, to, to be in that. But it actually got really boring. I actually didn't want to do it. And I actually switched jobs from that. Uh, when I started real estate investing, I uh, started a short sale transaction processing business, and we're doing up to one month, we did 200 short sales in a month. 200 short sales in one month. That's how fast we ramped this thing up. But I have to tell you, I was like, man, working 80 hours a week, I'm making some good money, but I'm like, man, this, this is like, the, I'm, a, I'm a slave to this job. I'm working 80 hours a week doing this. This is insane. Um, stuff is cool but unfulfilling. What do I mean by that? You've all heard the expression, money does not buy happiness. And money does not buy happiness, but I don't think that expression is completely true. I do believe money buys temporary happiness. Okay? If you win the lottery, you'll be very happy. Okay? I guarantee it. For a while. For a little while. 
Because what happens is we rapidly acclimate to whatever it is. Wealth is a totally arbitrary thing. You know, whatever it is to you. To you, you know, this is, is wealth and, and maybe you're here. But as soon as you get to here, guess what? This is wealth and, and you're here. And then you get to here and, and this is wealth up here. It's totally arbitrary. I know that in 2007, my wife and I, um, we ended up uh, owning a house. We had a, a, a 750000 dollars house, so we owned it free and clear, uh, and we had income and, and, and wealth and a business that was kind of cruising along. We could have just stopped, right? But it was like, no, we want to keep going. So when we got there, we felt successful. But in a very short amount of time, we felt like, well, this is just normal. You know, let's, let's keep going. And we ended up stretching our limbs a little bit, and we, we moved in. I told you that story when we moved into our, our big house, and we're driving up to the driveway in this $3.8 million house, and we're like, what are we doing here, right? And we felt like we didn't belong. We felt like we were imposters. But after a while, what happened? We became who? Remember that story? Yeah, we became the people we surrounded ourselves. That became the new normal. And that's just how wealth works. It becomes the new normal, OK? The journey is really more fun than the destination. That's one of the takeaways from that. So if it's not just this freedom thing, what is it? Well, I think actually your real goal, our real goal, everybody's real goal is a little bit different. And I think I'm going to define it for you here. I think the true goal is something I would describe as stress free abundance, stress-free abundance. What is stress-free abundance? Stress-free abundance is what we really mostly want, is we want to be able to do pretty much what we want, when we want, right, most of the time. And I'm just giving you this straight. That doesn't mean if you have a business, you can just screw around all day, right? You have to make sure you're working on your business. But you do want this thing called stress-free abundance. So what is this? Let's define it. Stress-free means having the confidence that your income goals will be met predictably and consistently. Remember when I showed you the marketing plan for the real estate business? Once you understand the numbers, once you have a marketing plan, once you know to make this much money, you need this much leads, you need this many marketing activities, right? Once you know that every month you're going to get this many leads and this many deals and this many dollars, and you've just seen it and understand the number and how the thing works well enough that you just know it's going to happen month after month, once that happens, the stress goes out of your life, right? Up until you understand it like that, it's stressful. I'm going to spend on marketing. I have no idea if I'm going to get anything back, right? But once you've done it and once you understand the numbers, that's how you get the stress-free part. You just know that your income goals will be met predictably and consistently because you have a plan. Uh, abundance. What is abundance? Abundance is a little different for everybody. Everybody has a different idea of what abundance means to them. It's that perfect lifestyle for you and your family and how to make that a reality. Some people's perfect lifestyle might be owning a little ranch out in the country. Some people might want to live in a high-rise condominium. Some people want to live in a big house uh, in town. Everybody's goal is a little bit different. So stress-free abundance. In summary, good life, you know, nice things, not having to do the things that suck, right? Okay. Everybody agree? Are we on track? What do you think, guys? Yeah? yeah? You agree? OK. Let's keep going. So how do you get there? That's great, Phil. How do you get there? So for most people, what do they need? Well, first, you need to cover your lifestyle essentials. We all need money to cover our obligations. And we'd all like to get a little upgrade, right? Whatever our lifestyle is, be nice to get a little upgrade. Uh, you have to replace your job income. Most jobs are essentially where you trade time for money. To get the time back, you have to have the money to replace the job. Once you have the money to replace the job, you don't need the job anymore. So time freedom comes from replacing the job income. And then finally, we'd all like to get some nice stuff, maybe a little nicer stuff for the family. Now, if you poll people and you say, well, what do you really want out of this real estate business, right? What do you want your business to do? Most people will say, you know, I just want a business that makes me $10,000 a month. That's the most common answer that we get. And that sounds pretty good, but I'm afraid that's not going to cut it, OK? $10,000 a month is not going to get you stress-free abundance. And I'll explain why. The average uh, executive salary is about $100,000 a year, according to comp data. If you cushion that up a little bit, let's call it $120,000 a year. $10,000 a month will simply pretty much replace most jobs with a new job. That's pretty much what you're going to get. It's not going to factor in any kind of lifestyle upgrade, the stress-free abundance stuff. Basically, the whole reason you're sitting here this weekend. 
So then what's it going to take? Well, remember we also said we wanted to get some stuff for our family. Uh, you know, the average home, according to MSN, is 2,100 square feet and, uh, according to the Census Bureau, $245,000. So a big dog house, whatever you want to call that, let's call that four times average, maybe 8,400 square feet, maybe a million dollars, could be more or less, depending on location. Um, so that's a house, right, a big dog house, a little more math, job replacement, million dollar mortgage, and cars and toys and vacations, right? Job replacement, $10,000 a month, million dollar mortgage, $7,000 a month, cars, toys, vacations, $3,000 a month, all that adds up to $20,000 a month. Here's what I'm going to define stress-free abundance at. Stress-free abundance starts at $20,000 a month. When you get to $20,000 a month, that is what I would define as entry-level stress-free abundance. When I got to $20,000 a month, I was starting to feel this thing called stress-free abundance. Now, if you make a million dollars a year, that's $83,000 a month, and it goes on and on from there. But at this level, you'll start to feel this thing called stress-free abundance. Okay, so in conclusion, stress-free abundance equals $20,000 or more a month, at first actively and then more and more passively over time. This is what I call the big dog. All righty? So, everybody still with me? Yeah, want me to keep going? Yeah. All right. So that's great, Phil, right? We've defined this thing, but right now it's just pie in the sky. You probably want to know what? You probably want to know, okay, how do I get that, right? Okay, let's talk about how you're going to get that. How do you get there with investing in real estate? Well, we're going to break it down. And I've broken it down into five distinct Step. Step one I call the lead broker business, the deal broker business, the deal doer business, the deal holder business, and the big dog model. Okay, these are the five steps. Now don't worry, you don't have to write all these down at this point because I'm going to go through these in a lot more detail. And the good news is at each level you're making money. You know, lead broker is really making money from marketing, making money from selling, making money from deals, making money from wealth, and then finally making money from your network itself. These are the five steps to becoming a big dog. And I'm going to break these steps down, I promise you, step by step, piece by piece, exactly. OK, so how much money does it take? We had somebody ask before, they said, I don't know, you know, do I have enough money to do this? Right? Everybody has enough money to do this. Now, if you take a look at you know, the five different levels, the five different steps, when you're getting started you know, as a lead broker, it takes little or no money. Right? Deal, deal broker, a uh, little more. Uh, deal doer is a lot of money. Deal holder, uh, less. And interestingly, enough, big dog, less and less. OK. Uh, how much time does it take? Same thing. Lead broker, very little time. Uh, deal broker, a little more time. Deal doer, a lot of time. Right? Deal holder, a little less. Big dog, less as well. Now, notice the shape right, of this curve. Both of these had the same shape. And the shape is actually going to come into play as we go through this, because you're going to start to see an analogy forming here and a story forming here. So what's the takeaway from this? Well, as you start your business, it takes very little time and very little money. Right? As you grow your business, it takes more time and more money. But as you master your business, it takes less money and less time again. Everybody still with me? Yeah. All right, keep going? Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So how do you get there? Well, let's talk about how to get there. Obviously, specialized knowledge is an important part of it. You're all here this weekend to acquire specialized knowledge, right? Um, you need a plan. I'm helping to build a plan right now, a plan to generate the leads and the deals and the dollars you need to make your goals, right? Maybe you need a little hand-holding. Most people need some hand-holding to get through all of this. And one of the most important things I think you need is I think you need baby steps. People need to break it down into consumable step-by-step -step procedures or steps, OK? Now, here's a problem, right? So we just defined what we want. We said stress-free abundance. We even monetarily defined it, 20000 or plus a month. We kind of have a goal in mind. We kind of have this destination in mind. But the problem is, right, we're starting over here, and there's this there's this big thing, right? There's this big thing in the way. So how do you get from point A to point B? Well, what most people do when they want to get from point A to point B is they seek training, 
right? So for example, if you wanted to climb a mountain, maybe you read a book. And the book will say, to climb a mountain, you need to gather 300 days of food, 15 tents, 25 maps, 50 blankets, you know, 100 picks and shovels, whatever. There's, there's, there's your plan. There's your training. Uh, if you want to become a real estate guru, right, read these five books, eight calls, 19 DVDs, 20 hours of video, you know, whatever, right? But the truth is, nobody really wants training. What they really want is what? They just want to get over the mountain. Exactly, right? All people really want are the results. So... We've got a problem. We're going to call it a big problem, right? And the big problem is we've got a starting point. We are here. We want to be here. And there's big, this big thing in the way. Now, I did some graphics for this slide. So I'm going to expect some oohs and ahs from the audience, please. OK? So here's this guy on the side of the mountain, right? And we're going to zoom in on him. Let's zoom in a little more. Ah, here we go. And this guy is climbing up the mountain, right? Uh, you know, and if you take a pretty close look here, what do I see? Well, my guess is that that mountain's probably pretty slippery, right? And, you know, it also looks like it's probably pretty steep. And my guess is that it's probably really cold out there. And looking at the size of that backpack, my guess is that that is really, really heavy. Okay, and when most people find themselves on the side of a mountain that's really, really slippery and really, really steep and they're really, really cold and their backpack is really, really heavy, what do most people do under that situation? Yeah, they say, oh, screw it, right? And they go back to, right, their regular life because life is comfortable. It's really comfortable watching TV, 200 channels of cable. It's awesome, right? So people fall into traps. What are the traps? One thing they do is they confuse training with doing. Training is not doing. I'll give you a, a, a hint. Um, when people join a gym, why do people join a gym? Anybody want to know why people join a gym? Why does somebody join a gym? To get in shape. To get in shape? Why else did somebody join a gym? Here. Feel better about themselves? Yeah, OK. So the answer is, you know why people really join the gym? Guilt relief. That's why people join the gym. Okay. Does joining a gym get you in better shape? No. No. No, not necessarily. Okay. No. What gets you in better shape? No. Going to the gym, right? Do you know that if you actually made the gym buy enough equipment to allow everybody that joined the gym to get in shape, do you know that every single gym in the world would have to have 20 times the equipment that they have? When they build gyms, they build gyms by design with 1 20th the amount of equipment they need to service all of their members because they know what? Most people don't go to the gym. They join the gym because they just want to feel better about themselves. They want to relieve a little guilt. Here's another trap, right? They try to do or know everything before doing anything, right? We talked about that. Learning about real estate is really not that complicated. It's kind of like learning a language, but for some reason people feel like they need to memorize the whole dictionary, they need to know everything before they take their very first step. That's a common trap. They do things that don't make a difference, right? Remember we said before, they work on the critical at the expense of the urgent. Exactly. What's an urgent activity you need to do? Find a deal. Yeah, find a deal. You don't need a business card to find a deal, right? That's the most important thing. Uh, they try to do everything by themselves, especially the left-brainers. Let me see the left-brainers' solidarity here, please. Yeah, the left-brainers, left-brainers are trying to do everything by themselves, right? And people get overwhelmed, and they give up. And that's what happens again and again and again, and they go back to their life, right? <laughs> Drinking the beer, watching the TV, it's life is good, right? That's the problem. We're all so comfortable. Okay, real estate. Here's a real estate problem. And my wife and I are very intimately uh, knowledgeable about this problem because we run many different real estate investor clubs, including the one that meets right here uh, in this building. 15% of the people that show up at our real estate club every month are brand new people. 15% of the people that show up every month are brand new. So for every 100 brand new wannabe real estate investors, 15% show up each month and 15% quit each month. So if you started the year with 100, you get down to 72, 52, 31, 19, 14, right? One year success rate. 14%. And the Census Bureau actually tracks those 14% for the next five years and discovers only 39.6% are still in business after five years, making the five-year success rate 5%.
What can I tell you about those 5%? How well do they do? They make all the money, folks. Those 5% are making a million dollars a year, OK? In other words, folks, it is not crowded at the top. It's the bottom that's crowded. I call being at the top being the big dog. I call being at the bottom everywhere else, OK? You either want to be on the top or you don't want to play. OK, in this country, it takes $380,000 a year to be in the top 1% of wage earners. I call these people the big dogs. All righty, so what's the solution? You probably want to know, OK, great, Bill. You pointed out a bunch of problems. What's the solution? Now I'm going to give you the solution. Now I'm going to break it down for you. Here it is. You need to think like a real mountain climber. That's the solution, right? Just concentrate on each milestone. Now, it used to be, for years and years and years, when somebody wanted to climb Mount Everest, what would they do? They put a backpack on their back, and they'd start to climb Mount Everest, and what happened to them? They all ended up dead. Yeah, they all died, every one of them, right? Until finally, somebody figured this out. And what did they do? Here's what they did. They said, we need to think like a mountain climber. We need to do this differently. We need to break this down into milestones. And here's how you climb a mountain today. You put on your backpack. You gather your materials. You go to the base of the mountain, and you set up a base camp. And when you get to that base camp, you pitch your tent. You spread out your equipment. You acclimate to the environment. You get a, uh, your, your boundaries. You figure out where you're going next. You get a new plan together. You get some new maps together. You get some new equipment together. You gather some more food. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready, you go on to the next base camp. And once again, you pitch tent. You acclimate. You gather what's going on in the environment. You put together a new plan. You get your new maps. You get your new equipment. You gather your new food. And then once you're ready, you go on to the next base camp, and so on and so forth. Okay? That's how you get over a mountain. Now, you can do the exact same thing as an entrepreneur. Of course, we don't necessarily call these base camps. We call them what? We call them milestones. You've got to break the problem down into milestones. That's how you avoid getting overwhelmed. All right. So uh, without a plan, without a Sherpa, you know, without a plan to do this, everybody died before they did this the right way. So let's say this, say this whole thing a little bit differently, right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Exactly. One bite at a time. So we need to break this problem down into one bite at a time. Everybody with me still? Yeah? OK. Want me to keep going? Yes. All right. So let's keep going. So why does this rule, right? When you break it down into milestones, it makes it digestible. There's many benefits to this. Mostly, it eliminates overwhelm, which is worth a lot, right? That's more than a training program can do. It gives clients what they really want. All people really want is the fastest path from point A to point B higher success rate. This is the difference between what we call a Sherpa model and a coaching model. What do we call a Sherpa model versus a coaching model? A coach is somebody who says, there's the mountain. You run on, you know, here's how you get over it. Go, 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 right? What does the Sherpa do? Takes you over the mountain. Exactly. Do you know when I was doing research on this presentation, I actually looked up Mount Everest. Uh, Mount Everest is where the term Sherpa came from. Mount Everest has actually turned into a tourist destination. Over 2,000 people have gone over the top of, of Mount Everest. Once they figured out this model, over 2,000 people have been to the top of Mount Everest. There's actually a quadriplegic that has been to the top of Mount Everest. When I worked at Motorola, the CEO of Motorola climbed to the top of Mount Everest. And this guy was no mountain climber. He was no jock. He just was somebody who found somebody to take him to the top of the mountain. Okay. And that's what can happen when you have somebody who's figured this stuff out and done it a thousand times do it. It's much easier to learn. It's much easier to teach one milestone at a time. It's cheaper and easier to learn it this way, one mile at a time, uh, milestone at a time as well. OK. And of course, at the end of the day, it's more rewarding, right? Because people see the results and they see the money at each step along the way. Most people wake up and they watch that stupid TV show, right? Flip that house and they jump into doing deals, right? So if you want to do a deal, buy a house, fix it up, and sell it again, what are you going to have to do? Well, you're going to have to find the deal. It's going to have to be a really good deal. You're going to have to negotiate a really good deal. 
and then you're going to have to have financing or money to be able to finance the deal, and then you're going to have to put together contracts and operationally manage the deal, and then of course you're going to have to have a lot of skill in terms of analysis and due diligence, because if you don't, you're not going to know the difference between a good deal and a bad deal. And that's a lot of different skills to master. Just to do your very first deal, there's a lot of things you have to do right there. Now, there is a little bit of an easier way to get into this. Uh, one of the easier ways is with wholesaling. A lot of people like to get started with wholesaling. Wholesaling is a little easier because you don't need to have any money to do it. You're just selling your contract. You actually don't have to be an expert at analysis and due diligence. Why? Because that's the guy who's buying it from you. That's what he has to have expert in. Um, but I think there's actually a, a, a much easier way to do it than even wholesaling. What's even easier than wholesaling is just finding the leads themselves. Finding leads is the simplest thing that you can do that gets started. You don't have to have any skill in sales or negotiating. You don't even have to have any skill in operations or contracts. Finding leads is just finding leads for investors that want leads. In the real estate investing business, we call people that find leads, we call them bird dogs or lead brokers. Bird dogs or lead brokers are people who get started in real estate by just generating leads for other investors. So lead brokers is really the simplest thing you can do to get started in this business because it only involves having one single skill. So what is the big dog model? The big dog model breaks down becoming a big dog into five distinct steps. Lead broker, deal broker, deal doer, deal holder, deal big dog. And I'm going to define and walk you through these five steps and through five milestones. So I said already the first step, the first milestone, the simplest thing you can possibly do to get started in real estate is just to be a lead broker, right? Base camp one is what I call the lead broker. This is a very simple business, right? It, all you have to do is find real estate investors and generate leads for them. Leads in exchange for money. You can make anywhere from $50 to $100 a lead. You can make anywhere from $2,000 to $8,000 a month just generating leads for real estate investors. You can get up to $100,000 a year while learning to master the most critical skill of being a real estate investor which is marketing. This is getting paid to learn how to do marketing, which is the most important skill that there is. Now, the truth, does somebody really pay you $50 or $100 or more just for a lead? Of course, leads are the lifeblood of a real estate investor's business. How much time do you think I spend on marketing? None. I outsource it all. I pay to have all of it done for me. Exactly. Real estate investors prefer to spend their time doing deals rather than generating leads. Okay? It's normal for investors like me to pay $100 a lead, and I will do that all day long. Once you become a reliable lead source for an investor, they will want to buy your leads over and over and over again. It's normal if you see those business cards up there for people to say right on their business cards, I pay referrals, I pay for leads, I pay for referrals. Okay? Now, the investor, don't worry about them, the investor that you're selling the leads to, guess what? They're making a lot more money than you are. About one in every 20 leads is going to make them a deal that makes $15,000 or more in profit. You do the math. It's very valuable for them to be buying leads. So how do you do this? Well, find investors that want leads. Really, really easy, right? There's 12,000 to choose from just on the RIA Matcher. Or you can just go to your local real estate investor association. There's rooms full of them everywhere you look. Step two, generate leads, right? Use a yellow letter service or 60 other methods that I started to teach you and I'll teach you more of tomorrow. The only skill that you have to develop to be a lead broker is generating leads, right? Learning how to generate leads. With a few phone calls, 10 mouse clicks, and less than an hour of work, you can be selling leads and making $400 a month just with one client. You want to make more money, you have more than one client. Okay, what are the benefits? You're getting paid to master the most important real estate investor skill there is. You're getting paid to become a master at real estate investor marketing. That's pretty cool. Making some cash fast up front, and you're building the ultimate buyer's list. Guess what? If you're providing leads and marketing services to other investors, these are the ultimate buyer's list. These are the buyers, partners, lenders, movers, and shakers. These are the people you're going to build your whole business around. The master marketer becomes the master investor. That's the whole presentation I gave you earlier. Your network equals your net worth. You are networking with the people that you want to become. The guy with the best marketing is the guy who ends up making the best money. But more than anything else, 
By understanding how lead brokering works, you really understand how this business works. You're building a strong foundation under your business. Sometimes when I see real estate investors and they're at an intermediate level and they're stuck, there's two places people get stuck. People get stuck at the very beginning, people get stuck in the middle. The guy who gets stuck in the middle is stuck in the middle because he's built a business in an unscalable way. He can't get unstuck, can't get to that next level because he never built a strong foundation under his business. Okay, we got through base camp one. Now we're ready to go on to base camp two. Base camp two I call the deal broker. What is the deal broker? It's actually a very simple business because at this stage we're going to negotiate some of the leads that we're already generating from base camp one and we're going to negotiate some of the leads into contracts. And then we're going to sell the contracts to the investors for money. Here's where you make $5,000 more or less per contract. You can make $120,000 a year while learning to master the second most critical skill of being a real estate investing, which is negotiating. Okay, by the way, you already have all the people you need to sell the contracts to. Same people you're doing the leads with. Okay, so how do you do this? What's the truth? Well, would somebody really pay you $5,000 for a contract? Of course. Real estate investors prefer to spend their time doing deals rather than negotiating deals. It's normal for people like me to pay $5,000 for a contract. And by the way, if you can't sell the contract, what do you do with it? You terminate it and walk away. It costs you $10 to get a property under contract. So the whole truth. Once again, don't worry about the investor buying your contracts. They're still making a lot more money than you are. Every time they buy a contract, they're making $15,000 or more. The average contract I buy makes me $25,000. Do you think I fret about spending $5,000 to make twenty-five? dollars No, that's spectacular. I do it all the time. That is very exciting to me. Now, I'm going to do a little foreshadowing to you, right, for you. You know, if you can start to see where this is going. The big dog is the guy who works less and makes more. Why? Because he's got lead brokers and deal brokers doing all the work for him. You're starting to see where we're going with all this. Yeah. Okay. How do you do this? Well, simply negotiate some of the leads, right, that you're already generating from base camp one. Sell the contracts to some investors, the same investors you're already doing business with from base camp one. The only new skill you have to develop at this base camp is negotiating. That's the only new skill. Tomorrow we're going to teach you some negotiating skills. We're going to teach you some of the closes. Okay, with 20 leads, a few phone calls, and a few mass clicks, you could be making $5,000 a month or more just selling one contract a month. Okay, benefits, you're mastering the second most important real estate investor skill, which is you're getting paid to become a master at negotiating at negotiating, making even more fast cash, building the ultimate buyers list. Once again, the people you're selling contracts to, these are the buyers, partners, lenders, movers, and shakers. You can build your entire business around. And even if you're already an investor, about a quarter of the room is already investors, by understanding how the lead broker business and deal broker work business works, that's how you build the network. That's how you build the foundation. That's how you build the foundation under your business to make your business scalable so that you can grow your business in a dramatic way. Okay, now we're ready to go on to base camp three. And base camp three I call the deal doer. How does the deal doer work? It's actually a very simple business. It's very simple now. At this point that you've been through base camp one and base camp two, that you've mastered those first two skills, now you're ready for base camp three. You've already made money, you've learned key skills, and now you're ready for base camp three. Base Camp 3 is a simple business at this point because now all I want you to do is negotiate some of those contracts, but instead of selling the contracts, you're going to take the deals down yourself. Now you're starting to take the deals down yourself. This is where you're going to start making $15,000 a deal. This is where you can make $180,000 or more a year with a full-fledged real estate investing business around the third most critical skill of being a real estate investor, which is strategy, okay, which is strategy. Now, most investors jump right into Base Camp 3, right? They watch, flip that house, and they jump right in to Base Camp 3. You know, and most of them don't make it. 5% make it. The rest that do make it tend to get stuck. And the reason they get stuck is because they've never built, it's like building a house without a foundation. They've never built it in a scalable way. Okay, what's the truth? Can you really make $15,000 a deal? Of course, yeah, real estate is a numbers game. I even taught you guys the numbers. 
$50 a lead, you know, 20 leads per deal, $15,000 profit for every $1,000 of marketing, rinse and repeat. It is a numbers game, right? Investors become experts at turning leads into deals, monetizing their marketing. That's what the business is all about. It's normal for investors like me to do this over and over again. And there's even tools and technology. We even talked about things like the REI Matcher that can systematize the process of doing this for you. Okay, the whole truth. This is a full-on real estate investor business. By the time you successfully become a deal doer, you're making lots of money, but it's also consuming incredible amounts of your time. You'll be happy for a while, but this is not stress-free abundance. This is the money you got into it for, but it's not yet the time. Okay, so how do you do this? You're just negotiating the deals, right, that you're already generating from Base Camp 1 and Base Camp 2, but you're executing, taking the deals down yourself using some additional strategies, strategies we covered yesterday. Your new skill, multiple real estate investor strategies. With 20 leads, several phone calls, many mouse clicks, you could be making $15,000 a month every time you do a deal. Okay, benefits, you're mastering the third most important critical skill of being a real estate investor. You're becoming a master and getting paid to be a master at real estate investing strategy. Does this make sense to everybody? Let me keep going. All right. So making lots of fast cash, building the ultimate real estate investor business. This is the money that you got into this for, right? But you haven't yet gotten that stress-free abundance. You haven't yet gotten the time. Most investors don't make it this far. Those that do generally get stuck. I've had the opportunity to talk to many of you during the breaks. And about a quarter of you have told me, I'm stuck at three. I've heard that again and again and again. Those people that have gotten into this business and actually done their first deal, a lot of you have said, I'm stuck at three. That's what I call it, stuck at level three. And then there's a lot of you that are stuck at level one, or you haven't gotten to, you're just getting started, and you're at base camp one, or about to get to base camp one. Okay, now that we've gotten to base camp three, now we're ready to go on to base camp four. And if you remember how that mountain looked, we're kind of starting to come down the other side of the mountain. You know, and it's a pretty good analogy because Base Camp 4 is the next step. I call it being the deal holder. This is a very simple business. It's simple at this point. And the reason it's simple at this point is because we're just going to add one more thing, right? We're already negotiating the deals from Base Camp 3, but now on some of the houses, we're going to take the equity, we're going to take the profit in the form of equity, right? We're going to hold on to them. Remember the last presentation we talked about yesterday? We talked about which properties do you hold on to. This is where you start holding on to some of the properties, the right properties in the right locations, using the buy and hold strategy. This is where you make $100,000 a house. 100000 100000 Every told you, every time you buy a rental property, you'll make $100,000. You've got to buy the right property in the right location and hold on to it for five years or eight years, and you'll make $100,000 a house. This is how you can make $20,000 a month. Eventually, passively, as you build your wealth portfolio and master the fourth most critical skill of being a real estate investor, which is compound appreciation. One of the ultimate uh, you know, uh, you know, things in the universe, eighth wonder of the universe, compound appreciation. Right? So the truth, can you really make $100,000 a deal? Did I prove to you yesterday that everybody can make $100,000 every time they buy a rental property? Remember that? Yeah. Exactly, yes, every house will eventually be worth $100,000 more than you paid for it. But if you buy the better houses in the better locations with bigger discounts and the right strategy and right location, it just happens much, much faster. Landlords master the, pro the, the process of turning rental properties into wealth engines. It's normal for investors like me to do this repeatedly, right? I do it over and over again. This is the key to building wealth. Base Camp 4 is the key to building wealth. You're triple dipping. You're getting equity on the buy. You're getting appreciation and cash flow along the way. It doesn't get any better than this. This is the passive money. Passive money is what creates the time freedom, the more time for your family. Being a deal holder generates more pure wealth than any other activity. This is almost stress-free abundance. There's one catch. It takes years. Okay, It takes years. Everybody should do this, but it's going to take many years to get there with this plan. Okay, this is stress-free abundance in about 12 years. In a minute, I'm going to talk about stress-free abundance in about 12 weeks. Okay, so how do you do this? Just keep, right? Keep some of the deals that you're already buying from Base Camp 3. Remember I said my philosophy when it comes to rental properties is the same as Blue Bell ice cream, right? We eat all we can and we sell the rest, right? We keep all we can and we sell the rest. We've got to sell some to 
keep the lights on, make some money, but we keep the right ones that are in the right location. The new skill here is just understanding the difference between a good deal and a bad deal, which ones to buy and which ones to hold. Okay, over time you can be making $20,000 a month passively, it just takes time. What are the benefits? Mastering the fourth most important real estate investor skill, compound leverage appreciation. You're making cash passively, you're increasing your net worth while reducing your taxes. Y'all enjoy the presentation earlier from Charlie? Was that pretty awesome? That was pretty awesome. Yeah, I tried to bring in the A-team for you guys. You see, these are my secret weapons. And one of the cool things about real estate is, right, the more money you make, if you do it correctly, the less taxes that you pay. This is your retirement plan. I want all of you, even though I never want any of you to retire, I want all of you to have the ability to build a massive amount of wealth. And you can at Base Camp 4, at the deal holder level. But now we're ready, because we've gotten past Base Camp 4, to go on to Base Camp 5. Base Camp 5 I call the big dog. So what is the big dog? It's a very simple business. It's simple at this point. Because at this point, what we're going to start to do is we're going to leverage our network. What does that mean? The marketing is now being done by who? The lead brokers. The negotiating is being done by who? The deal brokers. Even the deals are being done by who? The deal doers, who become our partners. Okay, you're starting to see where we're going here. You're just sorting out the opportunities. Buy, flip, assign, partner, hold, etc. Leveraging relationship while outsourcing. This is how you make $20,000 a month in under four hours a week with a scalable business that leverages the most important form of capital that I've talked about this weekend, which is relational capital, your net work. Okay, big dogs are really a combination of two things. The big dog is the guy who's got the best marketing machine, the best engine, and the best network. And they know how to make money with both. Okay, so the truth, can you really make $20,000 a month with minimal time and minimal money? Absolutely, if you have the network, right? The network means deals come to you, money comes to you, buyers and sellers come to you, haves and wants surround you. The big dog is surrounded by opportunity. The big dog has a network with the people around you. You've got people with money looking for deals, people that want to partner on deals, people that want to loan money, people that want to buy, people that want to sell, people with haves and wants. And because you've built this network around you, you're just putting the pieces together. The big dog is surrounded by opportunity. They're lucky because they have so many chances at luck. People say to me all the time, Phil, you're the luckiest guy I know. And the truth is, I just give myself more chances to be lucky than other people. That's really the whole thing. Okay, the whole truth. Big dog equals stress-free abundance. It's just much faster than waiting for the passive wealth that comes from buy and hold. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do buy and hold. Buy and hold absolutely works, and all of you should do it, but it takes a long time. So how do you do this? You're leveraging your network to attract deals, money, partners, etc. You grow your network to make more money. Okay? New skills, building a network, branding, positioning yourself as an expert, creating, for example, a special interest group, Real Estate Investor Association. Why do you think I have a Real Estate Investor Association that meets right here in this building? Because I'm a big dog, exactly. And by the way, I have big dog students that also have real estate investor associations and special interest groups that go along and do exactly this stuff with me. You have to learn how to monetize your network. Through what? Partnering. I discovered a long time ago I could make a lot more money by getting 50% of 100 deals than 100% of five deals. It's just a smarter way to do business. Sometimes the best way to get a deal is to get other people to find the deal for you. Affiliate marketing, et cetera, outsourcing everything. You are the big dog. The benefits, pretty simple. Stress-free abundance. Okay, stress-free abundance and you, right? Stress-free abundance is what it means to you. It's a little bit different to everybody. Remember we talked about abundance and everybody's got a slightly different effect or uh, opinion or uh, goal for abundance. Uh, this is what matters to me, you know, more than anything else, my family. Now, I always put this picture of my little boy 
uh, in my presentations, really for two reasons. One, to prove of the six billion people born of this planet, the single best looking human being ever born, was actually born in Austin, Texas, four and a half years ago, right? <laughs> you all have to agree with that. And the other reason I put that picture in there is what? Yeah, yes, I made $6,000, according to uh, Charlie, remember? <laughs> so thank you very much. But you know, we all have things that are important to us. And, and this is what is important to me. Um, I always get people, I, I, I'm blessed, obviously, in many ways. And, and my little boy, he's always got an amazing smile uh, on his face. In fact, when we took this picture, we took this picture uh, over a year ago uh, for his mom's birthday, for Shanoa's birthday, we took a bunch of family pictures. And we took 100 pictures of my little boy. And of course, they take all these pictures, and they want to sell you the pictures, right? So we have to pick the good ones. You know how many good pictures there were out of 100? Yeah, 99. There was like one. I think it was the photographer's fault for having their thumb in the way, right? This kid is incredibly photogenic. And he's always laughing and smiling. He's a very happy kid. Now, why is he so happy? Uh, well, uh, you know, I'd like to think we have a little bit to do with it. We get to spend a lot of time with him. We get to work at home. I have my office here, and his room's there. We've got a nanny. He's got schools. He's got a lot of advantages. He owns a house, right? At the ripe old age of four and a half, this kid's net worth is $155,000. Okay, I don't know, right, how much Harvard is going to cost in 13 years, but I'm pretty sure I've got it covered with just one deal. Right? Just one deal is able to secure this kid's future. And I'm pretty excited about that. I know when, when uh, we were talking earlier about uh, you know, the reds and the blues and the, and the yellows and the greens, the people with the big heart, you know, a lot of people in here have a big heart. A lot of people that have talked to me during some of the breaks have told me about some of your goals and aspirations and the things that you want to do with your life. A lot of people want to leave legacies. A lot of people want to help other people. What I always like to say is you want to help other people, you want to leave a legacy, You've got to help yourself first, right? You've got to put yourself in a position to be able to achieve the things you want and to be able to achieve the things you want for others. You know, Bill Gates was not a highly charitable guy when he was a young man. Uh, but after he became the world's richest man, uh, he created the Bill Gates Foundation. And he is now, with his wife, single-handedly, he and his wife are single-handedly curing malaria in Africa. By the time he dies, he may have saved more lives than other, any other human being in the history of the world. That's, that's a pretty significant uh, contribution to humanity, right? But he helped himself first. He put himself in a situation where he was able to do exactly that. So I like to be able to put myself in a situation where I have the resources to take care of the things that really matter to me, OK? What matters to you? I mean, think about it. You might want to think and, and just think in your own mind for a minute. You know, what, what are you really doing here? What do you really want? What's your why? OK, what's your why? Some of you were coming up to me during the break and said you really liked the story I told. Anybody here remember this? What is this? Yeah, one life. You get one. Some of you have heard me tell that little story. You get one, right? Are you living the life that you want to lead? Um, why are you here? What is your life? What is your why? Um, and remember my very most famous saying, right? If you're willing to do for the next five years what others won't do, you can put yourself in a situation for the rest of your life to be able to do what other people only dream about. You've got one life. This is the time. This is the place, right? It's up to you. What I hope doesn't happen is that you guys go back to your life on Monday and you roll up your sleeves but then you just let the life consume you, right? It'll push you right back down the track that you're on. Okay. How many people are committed to starting a new life on Monday? Can I see a show of hands? That's exciting to me. I really want that. I really want it for all of you. Okay. All righty. So um, here's what I'm looking for. Here's why I'm here today, right? I'm looking for people that are committed, that are really want to do this, that are really committed to do this that are willing to invest in themselves, that really want help, and that are willing to sacrifice you know, to get what they want, that are willing to put together a not doing list, stop doing list, so that you create the opportunity to do and get what you really want. I'm looking for people that want help. And I want to help as many people this weekend as possible. You know, one of the ways we're helping you is sharing with you a lot of specialized knowledge. Another way we're helping you is we're offering you different training and services and things like that. And I want as many of you as possible to obviously be able to take advantage of what we have to offer because I want you to all get what you want. 
One of the ways I help people is I help people become big dogs. I do it with something we call a big dog expedition. I'll tell you for a minute about the big dog expedition. I take groups of students, small groups of students, on something I call an expedition. Basically, I take them through those five different milestones for people that want to become big dogs. I'm going to kind of explain uh, what a big dog is. OK, um, if you need help, if you want help, here's what I have. I will take you step by step, baby steps, through the five base camps that I just defined. These are spread out over time. The reason we spread them out over time is it gives you time to acclimate right, and adjust to each step, to each base camp. The way we do this is with a 12-week trek over the mountain, 12-week expedition. I call it an expedition. It turns out it's a really good uh, analogy because it really does feel like an expedition. Right? Every week, we cover one step, one milestone. We add some bonus material and time be five, between the five different base camps, the five different milestones uh, along the way. If you want to be a big dog, if you want this thing called stress-free abundance, I can help make that happen for you. Simple results, results equals money. 12-week program, including some bonus topics. I do this with a small group of people. Okay? I take a small group of people through this program. The way I do this is I teach it on a weekly basis where every Friday we teach for usually 90 minutes to, an hour, uh, to two hours. Um, if you don't uh, get to watch the thing live, we post it, and you can watch it anytime for the next several days. And then on the following Wednesday, we do a live Q&A call together to cover any questions that you have, make sure everybody's doing their homework and is on track and on the expedition. Everything is recorded in case anybody misses anything. Nobody's overwhelmed. Everybody gets results. Everybody loves it, et cetera. OK, commitment needed. You want to be this. You want this. Here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to commit to me. I need 90 minutes on Friday, or sometimes up to two hours. If you can't do it Friday, you can do it any time before the next Wednesday. That's to go through the lesson. On Wednesday, we do another 90 minutes, sometimes up to two hours, to go through the Q&A. Every week, you're going to get about four hours of homework. Homework assignment is doing marketing, doing lead brokering, building the network. Very specific, very simple. It's really easy, folks. Very simple steps that were very carefully designed to get you through each milestone. That total commitment is eight, maybe up to 10 hours a week over the next 12 weeks. There's some optional extra credit, as much extra credit as you're willing to go do. But you will have to commit to eight to 10 hours a week. Okay? Yes, everything is recorded. Yes, people take vacations. And that's why we record everything during a 12-week, that's several months expedition. We expect people to take vacations and things like that. If you miss a week, great. You've got to catch up the next week. When we do these expeditions, we also obviously take time off around holidays and things like that. We're preparing another expedition. We're going to be taking time off for Christmas and holidays coming up, for example. OK, here's what this will do for you. You will travel through the five base camps with me. I will be your Sherpa, right? You will make money at each base camp along the way. That is important because it gives you positive reinforcement, encourages you to go forward. I will get you to the other side of the mountain. You will use this to meet your lifestyle goals by creating a consistent flow of income. All right, what are the 12 weeks? How does this program break up? Um, week one is really a setup week. It's really a prep week. It's kind of like we're preparing for an expedition. And during this week, we set up your infrastructure and branding. I set up my big dog's business for them. What does that mean? I create all your websites. I give you business cards. I give you everything. The whole business is set up. Branding, logos, everything. We don't have time to fool around with this stuff. Okay? We just need to get this done. Okay? So we get it all done right out of the chute, right in, in week one. Then week two, we go on to base camp one. This is setting up the lead broker business. You're starting to do marketing. You're starting to generate leads. You may even be recruiting other investors that you're either selling leads to, getting referrals from, or putting into something we call a marketing co-op, which is a really powerful function, a system we build for you. Week three, we talk about negotiating. And we start practicing talking to people. Week four, we're now one month into the program, and we're ready to set up our deal broker business. Now we're starting to talk and negotiate contracts. Okay? Week five is a bonus week. We talked about due diligence, analysis, and agreements. Week six is another bonus week, financing, creative offers, et cetera. 
And now we're almost two weeks, two, two months into the program, and we're ready to be a deal doer. Deal doer is base camp uh, three. And this is where we're ready to start taking down our deals, start taking down the deals ourselves. Week eight, bonus week, advanced negotiating and advanced closes. And week nine, we're now ready to be a deal holder. This is where we're starting to buy rental property. We're starting to buy the buy and hold properties. Week 10, advanced business management. And week 11, now almost three months into the program, now we're ready to put together the final pieces and implement the big dog model. Now, by the way, we are building towards big dog every single week. I can't go through all the homework and everything else, but each week we're adding to the network. There's all sorts of automation tools and systems that are built up. By week 11, we are, I'm sorry, uh, week 11, we are at base camp five. We are the big dog. And week 12, this is a $280,000 a year case study, basically a look behind the curtains on how this whole thing works. Okay, so it's a 12-week expedition. Once again, I teach what to do on Fridays, and we do Q&A on Wednesdays. Everything is recorded. Uh, all questions are answered. I do this with a small group of people. Every other week covers one major milestone that you must pass through before you can go on to the next milestone. By the end of these 12 weeks, you should be getting leads, deals, flips, rentals, followers, etc. Okay, additional help is also available. Um, at the end of this expedition, we also do a number of other things. One of the things we do is we all get together. We have a mastermind and we have an exclusive three-day workshop at my home in Austin, Texas, where I teach you some very advanced stuff, right? You get to mastermind with your peers. You're going to start to build a network with these other people that are big dogs in your class. You'll get a lot of personal help with me. That's why we do it with a small group. This is what I call experiential learning, right? You can read about things in a book or you can watch a video, but actually sitting out and doing it and taking some fields, like for, uh, going out in the field is very, very educational. So for example, we actually are going to get all on a bus together. And we're going to drive around and go to houses. You're going to actually get to see a chronological, you know, my career, right? We're going to show you the different houses I built and did and bought and held along the way. Usually we go to some projects that are active projects, so we'll walk through some renovations and some actual deals, and you'll get to look behind the curtain at these deals, and you also get to look behind the curtain at my office, right? You get to see how I actually run my business as well. You get a little taste of that stress-free abundance as well. We have a movie night at my house. We do a tour, a catered dinner, and a surprise VIP event. It's a lot of fun, uh, and it's a very, very high-level uh, event, and it's a very exclusive uh, event. Okay, um, live one-on-one uh, -on -one phone consultations. Now, some, pe some of you have asked me this. I don't do one-on-one -on -one phone consultations. And, and it's not because I'm a jerk or I'm, you know, don't play hard to get, whatever. I mean, I just, I don't have time. I have 60,000 students. And if I was on the phone all day with 60,000 people, I'd never be able to rest a minute. I just can't. It just doesn't scale. I do have high-end clients. I have clients that pay me $50,000 as private consultants to give them one-on-one -on -one time. Occasionally, I do one-day consultations. I charge $15,000 for a one-day consultation. I don't even do that very often. And the reason I don't do that very often is it's very disruptive. I mean, I've got to take the entire day to focus. And you'd think maybe $15,000, but I actually make more than that on average than $15,000. So it's not the best use of my time. These people obviously seek me out and pay me these fees because I'm worth it. I mean, not to brag, but that's the level that I've gotten my, my stature and my, and, and my value up to. Um, that being said, when my big dogs call me, I do take calls from my big dogs. When my big dogs get stuck, I will actually speak one-on-one -on -one with my big dogs and help my big dogs through their problems. Okay, bonus training. Um, most of you or many of you are here because you have... Uh, different training programs from me. You have maybe the AMPS program or the Revolution program. How many people have the AMPS program, by the way? Let me see a show of hands. Revolution program, let me see a show of hands. A lot of people have the Revolution program. Um, so a lot of you have some of my training programs uh, or maybe our online tools. And I give all of my training programs and all of our tools, websites, uh, autoresponders, I give everything to my big dogs. Why? I didn't develop all this stuff for you. I love you guys, right? I mean, I developed all this stuff for me, for my wife and I, but we want our big dogs to have an exact copy of our business. We're big dogs. We're trying to make people into big dogs, so we want to give them a copy of all the tools and resources that we have. 
So we have, for example, the Complete Revolution Program. Several people here have the Complete Revolution Program. We also have something called the Complete AMPS Program. And AMPS is the ultimate seller finance program. And it's very, very comprehensive. Probably the proudest uh, program uh, that I have. Uh, really a game changer in terms of understanding how to turn lemons into lemonades and make money after the banks uh, melted down. Um, we also have a program called the Marketing Machine. I don't sell this. I, I, uh, I don't sell this any longer. I, I just, this is something I hold back. It's really internet marketing for real estate investors. And I had a, a, a couple of years ago, I took a group of my uh, best students and I, and I gave them this program. Uh, but we haven't offered it before, but we are giving this to our big dogs. This is how to get to page one on Google. I spent $50,000 developing that campaign. I give that to my big dog students. This is a complete copy of my entire uh, online footprint, basically my websites and all of the things that I do. So it's pretty powerful stuff. We also have a program called the All-in-One Program. This is kind of the everything program for real estate investors, including a lot of done-for-you services. So we take all of these programs, which is everything you see on the screen on all of these different screens, and we give all of those programs to all of our big dogs. Because again, we need our big dogs to have every possible tool at their disposal. I also set all of my big dogs up with the REI Matcher. What does that mean? We will build you websites. We will build you your own network. We will build you your own marketing machine. Um, the REI Matcher has property syndication. If you post a deal into the REI Matcher, it blasts it out to thousands of other investors. It puts the deal in the wholesale marketplace or the seller finance marketplace, and it posts your deal on up to 250 other websites like Trulia and Zillow and all over the internet. There's also a pro version of the REI Matcher that builds you the ultimate seller website. We give all of our big dogs the pro version of the REI Matcher. ProVersion also builds squeeze pages, which are specialized websites for capturing seller leads and buyer leads. The ProVersion also includes autoresponders, automatically follow up on all of your leads for you. It integrates with your social media, manages all of your leads, and includes the scoreboard. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And it includes the automatic contract generator that's a paperless DocuSign-based contract generator. Also includes something I didn't have up here called uh, the marketing co-op that's maybe I'll talk about a little bit tomorrow. And we set all of this up for you. You don't have to know anything about computers. You don't have to know anything about websites. You don't have to know anything about anything. We set this up for the big dogs because we just don't have time for big dogs to screw around with this. In other words, sometimes people fall into the trap of spending too much time setting up their business. We need you focused on the expedition. We've got to get you through each one of these base camps. We've got to get you over the mountain. We also set all of our big dogs up with their own real estate investing group, right? Your own network. We will help you set up a meetup, a RIA, and or a special interest group. We will help build your website for you. We will supply you content, members, forums, deals. We will provide you online streaming of meetings. You will automatically monetize your network through an automatic response system. This is really powerful. I don't have time to explain it, but every time you add somebody to your network, the network starts making money for you because an automatic response sequence, basically emails go to, out automatically to all the people you add to your network, asking them to partner, to loan money, to if they have uh, deals, et cetera. Many different ways to monetize your network, which is, of course, what being a big dog is. And we will, of course, train you how the big dog uses the network to make the big bucks. Most of the money we make comes from our networks. That's why we are big dogs. So the big dog model is really this. You know, your network and your marketing surround you with opportunity. You are surrounded with has, wants, partners, deals, lenders, buyers, sellers, and money. That is happening because you have the best marketing and you have the best network and you're making money from both. Additional support we give to all of our big dogs. You're all enrolled in my gold coaching program. That means every other Monday night you get on a live Q&A call with me. Now we have a live Q&A call every Wednesday, but if you need additional help every other Monday, you're invited to another call, and every other Wednesday night, you're invited to another training call. Now, the training calls we do on Wednesday night are not part of the Big Dog program. It's just things that you need to know to be a more effective entrepreneur. Some of the kinds of concepts we talked about this weekend. Everything we talked about this weekend is how to be a real estate investor, but you notice a lot of it is just kind of how to focus, how to be a better entrepreneur, how to be more successful. 
Big Dogs also receive every call and every video recorded from the Gold Coaching Program for the last two years. We record all of these calls, we record all of this training going back two years and you get it all. And you get unlimited email support. If you ever have a question, you can also email me. And I promise I will get back to you within 72 hours. Now the truth is, usually I get back to you within 24 hours, but I may be on vacation or something, so I say 70, uh, 72 hours. Okay, you're also part of a big dog mastermind. Once a big dog, always a big dog. The big dogs are a growing community. We have a big dog mastermind. All of the, everybody is in an exclusive mastermind group. That means you have a listserv and the ability to communicate and network. We have big dogs that are starting to partner up on deals. Just last week, two of my big dogs partnered up and they made $104,000. They each got $52,000 from a deal they partnered on. We have big dogs that are partnering on marketing, marketing co-ops. One of the big dogs is setting up billboards around the country for other big dogs. There's a lot of cool stuff that becomes part of this community. Your net worth equals your net work. Um, there's also part of the big dog program called the Business Launcher. The Business Launcher is where we just build all of your logos for you. You need an investor brand, a seller brand, and a buyer brand, so you need different logos for your different brands. You need to make sure your email is branded, your name at your domain.com, not at Yahoo or, or, or Google or whatever. Um, you need a box of business cards. You need your different websites for your buyers, for your sellers, and for your investors. So we build different brands, different logos, even different websites for you for the different markets, and all of that is done for you. Uh, I am your Sherpa. 12-week expedition, training calls every Friday, Q&A calls every Wednesday, optional access every other Monday night and every other Wednesday night. And of course, the most beneficial access is 24-7 email support, two hours of one-on-one -on -one phone calls, and the ultra-exclusive live workshop. You also get some VIP access. Um, we have this REI Matcher system. For our big dogs, we give you a phone number of our top, top support person. Everybody else has to submit a help ticket and you're going to do it through an email. Our big dogs get a phone number of our top support person who's assigned to them. And in my office, you get a phone number of somebody that works in my office. Typically, it's Nancy. Nancy, say hi in the back of the room. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy is somebody who's dedicated to helping my big dogs with everything and anything they need. And speaking of uh, help, we have one other feature that we've implemented in the Big Dog program, and it's a pretty big one, especially for the right-brainers in the room. I know we have a lot of right-brainers in the room. What we've done and what we've made part of the Big Dog program is we've instilled something we call an accountability aid or an accountability coach. And what this person is, is somebody that's responsible for keeping you on the expedition. You know, I'm taking a bunch of people on an expedition. It's a really good analogy. I can't have people kind of wandering out into the woods, right? We've got to keep us all together. We've got to keep us all on track. So every Friday, your accountability aide is going to call you, right, to hold you accountable. They're going to make sure you're doing your homework. If you have any questions, concerns, issues, they will fix those questions, concerns, issues. But it's kind of like going to the gym, right? You know, I hired a personal trainer. My personal trainer would call me up. Say, Phil, you got to come over to the gym today. I'm tired. I don't really feel like it. I'll go tomorrow. No, you're coming today, right? That's what a trainer does. That's why when you hire a trainer, you're much likely to get in shape than if you just say, I'll do it when I do it. So your accountability aid is there to kick you in your you know, rear quarters, right? Answer your questions, check on your process. And they give me a report. Every week I get a report from the accountability aides on how my big dogs are doing. So we know when you are sleeping, we know when you're awake. We know if you've been good or bad, so you better be good for goodness sake, right? Okay, at the conclusion of the 12 week expedition, the program goes on, actually goes on for a year because you have continued access to weekly open coaching calls. You can receive direct help as you need from real estate investors. Master investors can review your deals, work on your challenges, even listen, you can even listen to other investors, ask their questions and review their deals as well, which is very educational. We also, for our big dogs, do a personalized on-site visit. Okay, we call this the ultimate expedition. You will work hand in hand with a master coach at your location. What does that mean? One of our big dog coaches comes to your location to help set you up and get you going, right? You will do a weekly pre-trip planning, uh, some weekly assignments for preparation, and then during the trip, 
that they come and visit you on, you will attend an auction, you'll go some, and meet some real estate agents, you'll meet and talk to some different title companies, you'll go to some real estate clubs, you'll look at lots and lots and lots of properties and much more. And they will work with you hand in hand until you get your first deal done. And depending on where you are, your next deal done. You know, one-on-one -on -one uh, mentorship until your deal is complete, right? And this is all about getting your business set up and getting you going in your business. And finally, the deal hotline. The deal hotline is what? 24-7 emergency access. Sometimes when you need help, you need help, right? So if you need answers now, our coaches will provide them. We'll give you an emergency hotline number where you can speak to one of our coaches whenever you need help. And then finally, like I said, at the end of the 12-week expedition, you get assigned your own one-on-one -on -one big dog coach, a private one-on-one -on -one deep dive real estate uh, coach for the next year. This is somebody who's assigned to you to work with you hand in hand and mentor you one on one. You will have everything you need to effectively plan, map, and execute your real estate business with this help. So that's the deal. You know, sometimes people say, is this like a franchise? It's better than a franchise for people that are asking. This is a turnkey business setup, training, mentoring, systems, tools, you name it, right? It's in there. Uh, and the nice thing about this is you invest once and you earn forever. In a franchise, you invest and you invest and you invest and invest. You have to pay every time you do a deal with this. You pay once, you invest once, and you go forever. So that's it, folks. Was that pretty helpful to you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. So, um, <clears throat> thanks. Really appreciate that. Um, who wants to be a big dog? I see a show of hands. Well, awesome. So um, I want everybody to be a big dog. Actually, we don't have room for everybody, but I want a lot of you uh, to be a big dog. And what are we going to do? Dutch, is Dutch still here? Yes. Dutch, if you want to get information about this, we really want everybody that really wants this. People that are committed and really want this, we want to make this available. This can be scaled to you, right? So we can scale it to you if this is something that you want. Do we have some sign-up sheets in the back? OK, so if you'd like inf information about this, if you'd like to talk to somebody about this, we would love to talk to you about it. I really want as many people to achieve as much as you can and as much as you want to this weekend. So with that, we're going to go ahead and adjourn for the evening. I will say we haven't quite covered everything I want to cover. So is everybody OK starting tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock? All right? Yeah. We good? Yep. You all into it? All right, so we're going to start tomorrow morning uh, at 8 a.m. sharp. I promise a uber cool surprise for everybody that shows up on time uh, tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be the biggest and best day yet. I always save the best for last. I'm going to go through a whole bunch of case studies.